Well, that's about the Land Rover. I thought to do an update because I haven't done one for ages. So here we have the, we've put badges on the front and the back. That's a Remy badge. And then we've got our, our trusty, uh, what, breakdown light mounted on the back. That's quite solid that. I've used an actual shock absorber spring washer or shock absorber washer. Then a huge bolt on the bottom to mount that. That's pretty good, nice and solid. Then we've gone for, on the front, we've gone for our Remy badge on the front. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've got our uh, homage to uh, mechanics and recovery mechs everywhere with our little engineer's vice on the bumper. And that's because she's a, a bit of a recovery truck. And and what we did here, we've got, I'll show you the, the trailer in a second, but we did the, well, the first test run out with the trailer. And that's the mount. So it's a NATO hitch mount, which I've refurbed and painted and stuff. And then we went for a stiffener plate, which the chain goes on to hold it still. I've still got to change these bolts. These aren't quite the right bolts, but I'll change them at some point. And I wanted a neat solution to strengthen the rear cross member because this is a civilian Land Rover and the military ones of the NATO hitch are a lot stronger. And so what I've done here is I've put a piece of angle iron here. So that's bolted to the rear cross member, which strengthens this. And I've tried to do a, a shape which kind of matches that shape here on the rear cross member. So if I pull back, it's kind of neat and tidy and there's no drop plate so quite a lot of what you know what happens on landers is they mount the hitch kind of down here and they put a big drop plate here and i wanted a, a kind of neat solution i think that's pretty neat on there uh, i've got an adapter in there for the time being because i've got a 13 pin plug in there so i can power like ex ancillaries and stuff and that's an adapter to take a seven pin trailer <clears throat> and then so underneath so strengthen the cross member then underneath we had to manufacture uh, some bars, some strengthen bars, to go onto the the angle iron. So we've got these six mil steel bars, which have been bent about there, and then bent there, to make them go into the uh, into the into the body, into the chassis of the truck. So I've got one on that side there, and then I've got one on this side. <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, one on that side there so we've got two that come out to the angle line and the angle line i think the angle line's three mil angle line so it's three mil thick and then these bars are six mil to make it all nice and strong and we took the first test drive of the trailer the new trailer's arrived so i'll, I'll walk over and show you the trailer because that's now here and the trailer's down here so the trailer's going to be a an off-road trailer and, and i want it to be well, kind of robust and strong. So I've gone for a military trailer and parked under the trees where all the cars are dusty and so. But so that's got the NATO ring on it, which is normal standard. This is a Sankey trailer, three quarter ton GS trailer. And, and it's a bit battered because it's about 25 years old. Um, it's got a plate on it. I wonder if the date's on the plate, I'm not actually sure. Uh, so this was built by uh, Reynolds Boughton to a military spec, of course. So everything's super strong, but one thing I'll notice is that the, the brakes don't work <clears throat> because there is no brake fluid. I don't think there is anyway. Yeah, there's no brake fluid in there, so the brakes don't work. So we'll have to fix them. And then we've already got the wheels. So the wheels and tires, someone's put these on a farm. I bought this off a farmer, so it's been stood on the farm for ages. Now we can see the tubs rusted through on the back. So we're going to take the tub off. We don't need the tub, we just need the frame. To take the tub off and then the wheels and tires, they're the right size wheels and the, the hubs are right. The wheels are uh, the right size, but wrong type because I'm putting wolf wheels on. And then the tires are two three fives and I want two five fives on. So the tires and the wheels are wrong. I've got the wheels, I've got some refurbed wolf wheels, which are genuine, so I'm going to fit them on. Hopefully these wheel studs are long enough. I'm not sure if they are or not. If they're not, then we'll change the wheel studs as well. So we're putting wolves on, and then the same tyres as on the Land Rover. And I t when I towed it back, it it tows incredibly level. I mean, it's, I mean, they're made for Land Rovers, these are. They're absolutely perfect. So the whole of this tub's coming off, and then we just need the frame, which is 
uh, the leaf springs, the shocks, and that bar across there is the frame. And then this front frame here. And then what we're doing is we're, we're cutting this piece off here, putting a, a, a square, uh, I think 770 millimeters, which is about here, and then reattaching this frame out here. So we're gonna be 770 millimeters longer on the frame. And that's so the wheels sit further back. And of course, you've got a bigger trailer then. Uh, because it's a brake trail, I can go up to 3,000 kilograms, which I'm not, but I could do legally if I wanted to. Now, another thing I've noticed is the handbrake doesn't work either. <clears throat> so, so this trailer needs a full, a full refurb, really. <clears throat> In fact, <laughs> that's absolutely manky. So everything on the trailer's uh, a bit battered, but I didn't need a a new trailer because because it's a it's they're so heavily built. I mean, just this, this is three mil steel. I mean, that's been around 30 years. It's not gonna go anywhere. And the springs, uh, sorry, the uh, leaves, what we're gonna do with these is we're gonna rope them. And the reason we rope them, they used to do that on old fashioned cars. It's because they're exposed, they, they rot out. So I'm gonna take these apart uh, and then we're gonna and get them blasted, put them back together again and then rope them. And what you do is you soak the rope in oil and then you wrap it round in a spiral around the springs all the way across and uh, and then they just last forever then, just absolutely forever. So some bits and pieces have got to come off here, off the Sankey. It'll probably need new brake shoes or drums or both. It'll probably need new shockers. And uh, the cables look all right, the handbrake cable looks okay. So I'm presuming the drums are either out of adjustment or that they're uh, battered. Uh, they've got two, these things as well, the jockey wheel. The jockey wheels are about a hundred pounds if you buy a replacement. So the jockey wheel's good. The frame's good, which is what I want. The springs and stuff are all there. Wheels and tires I'm gonna change anyway. All the lights are here. We might change these to make them look prettier because these aren't very, I mean, these are all old rubber and a bit battered. So we might change all these. Uh, and we'll probably get the frame blasted. What that means is, <clears throat> uh, blasted, sand blasting means it's gonna take all the paint off, all the rot off and uh, go back to new. So we'll get a new coating on it and it'll look like a brand new trailer when we've finished it. So the tub's, tub's coming off. Um, uh, it's only held on by these bolts here and these along here. So we'll take the tub off. That'll be quite heavy to take off. So we might have to cut it up a bit to get it off. Uh, but once it's off, we'll start on the frame and, and start rebuilding the thing and make it uh, make it new. But at the moment, I mean, she tows brilliantly. She really does. Um, obviously, she's got no brakes on it, but um, it was empty when we towed her back, so it didn't really matter. So that's Land Rover in the truck. And... Uh, yeah, mine is Mark. See you soon.